go ahead and get started. Um, we may have a few more hop on, and if we do, that is fantastic. Um, but welcome, thank you all so much for being here. We are super excited for today's event. Um, one of our final days of Be a Jayhawk Week. So um, my name is Angie Bass and I am an Assistant Director of Freshman Recruitment based out of Omaha. And hey everybody, my name is Chancellor Adams. I'm also a Lawrence-based rep um, based in, I mean, Lawrence and I cover Kansas City, um, Missouri and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so don't get me confused with the Chancellor of the University. Different, different people. <laughs> um, well, yeah, we are super excited to have you all here today in our chat. We also have Casey Bray, Jolie Webb, and Amy Nelson. Um, Amy threw something in there to go ahead and change your name um, to your first name and your hometown and state, so we kind of know where everybody's from. Um, today's theme of the day is Toolkit for Success. So we're going to talk about just some of the things that can help you really thrive and do your best at KU. We are a part of the Association of American Universities, which means that we have really, really awesome accessible resources for our students. And we really want to create an environment that helps students to have the best possible educational outcomes. Um, so KU does our best to support the student experience by having about 30 students or less and over around 75% of our classes. We have really awesome world-renowned faculty that are doing research right next to undergraduate students, not necessarily masters or PhD students, um, but undergrads. And then we also have a lot of really great um, programs within KU that help our students feel supported and empowered to do their best based on what their needs are. And one of the main things that of those programs that we're going to focus on is actually going to be um, the University Academic Support Center here. So we call it the UASC um, now. And essentially, we do have a representative that will be here talking to you. Um, we'll introduce them later. But um, before we get into that, Angie's going to tell you a little bit more about some other things, too, that we have here special for you. So, yes. 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 A very special someone here with us today. So, um, Dr. Yvonne. Chen is here. Um, she is one of those many awesome faculty members that I had kind of mentioned earlier a couple minutes ago. So um, Dr. Yvonne Chen is here. She's an associate professor within the School of Journalism and Mass Communications. Um, so she is doing research that centers on designing effective programs that promote healthy lifestyles. Um, so her most recent research focuses on how the brain is a window to understanding the effects of persuasive messages. Dr. Chen teaches courses on research methods, strategic campaigns, health communication, grant writing, and data analysis. So Dr. Chen, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Angie, for your very kind introduction. Good afternoon, future Jayhawks. A very warm welcome to our online session. So I thought for this afternoon, you have so much ahead of you. Perhaps a brief mindfulness activity can help us center and perhaps find a quiet space right now. For those of you who may have tried mindfulness or you may have meditated quite regularly, mindfulness is a very simple technique that focuses on being in the present moment. Well, we know it can get a little bit hard when your cell phone is buzzing, your parents or guardians are knocking on your door asking you to do things for them. And we know we are we live in a very hectic life. So I would like to warmly invite you all to join me on this really brief mindfulness activity. I do want to let you know that mindfulness has thousands of years of tradition. So this activity we're doing right now is by no means comprehensive but it's a start. So if you would like to join me, and I do highly encourage you to do that, find a comfortable position where you are seated. As you may, as you can tell, I'm actually in my living room sitting on my cushion. So find a spot that you feel like you can feel, you can be centered, that you feel safe. If you're on your bed, please do not worry about it. Any place is good. I'm sitting cross-legged right now, but for those of you who are sitting on your chair, let's make sure that to uncross your legs so that your body circulation can remain 
circulated, obviously. And making sure your feet are firmly planted on the ground for those on a chair. You may wonder where should your hands be? Well, you can put your hands on your laps, maybe on top of your table, or maybe put it next on your side, whatever you feel like right now. There's really no right or wrong way of being mindful. The goal is we're trying right now. If you are in a space where you feel protected and safe, and if you feel like closing your eyes is the right way to do, please try to do so. As you close your eyes, which I will be doing right now, you may notice that it's easy to find that the inward gaze and feeling that your mind gets quieter. Of course, not all of us can be closing our eyes. You can actually gently open your eyes, but remain a very gentle gaze. You may look into your keyboard or somewhere around your bed, your desk, or your living room floor, whatever it might be for you. So just take a few seconds to feel our body. Notice the way you're breathing right now. As you breathe, you may notice your chest is moving up and down. Your belly is moving up and down as well. Or you may notice you find this urge to want to move a little bit. Well, let it be. Let your body be. I would like for all of us to relax our facial muscles here. As I'm sitting here, I noticed that, ooh, the back of my jaw is still tight. So relax the back of your jaw, your cheeks, the muscles in between your eyebrows, And do know that no matter what happens, you have this power to find a quiet corner to become peaceful and mindful. So this mindfulness is about being present. Just be. So I know a lot of you just had your lunch or maybe you had a grown-up bar or maybe you skipped your lunch. Perhaps let's take some moments to thank the food that we just ate. We human beings need food to sustain us, but oftentimes we eat in front of our computer in, or watching our phones while eating. And sometimes you may actually forget, what did I ju just eat? Just take this moment to recognize how we're connected with our food. The nutrients sustain us. So let's thank your lunch. We'll end our mindfulness with one simple breath together as a Jayhawk community. And this is really simple. We will do five breaths in, one second hold, and seven seconds out. So let's let go of your current out breath. Breathe it out. And when you're ready, let's breathe in together. One, two, three, four, five, hold, and let it out, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You can gently open your eyes, or you can now move your eye gaze back to you, Angie. Thank you so much for this mindfulness practice with you. I hope I hope you will find a quiet space for the rest of this afternoon and get to know 
KU better and please be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. That was an amazing experience. I feel like I am very calm now. So um, we're actually going to go ahead and transition over to the UASC and we're going to have Andrew Shoemaker um, actually speak for us. Um, and he's going to be able to talk a little bit more about that um, program here at the university. And um, I'm going to hand it over to him. Now, this is the first time in a long time I've actually started speaking before I unmuted myself. I still struggle with remembering to unmute myself. So I'm going to share my screen. I am thrilled to be here with you all today and talk a little bit about some of the things uh, that we do. Okay, so we are the University Academic Support Centers. We are a unit within uh, academic success, which used to be called undergraduate studies, but they changed their name in May. Uh, and actually, we changed our name in July, in June. Um, we used to be the Academic Achievement and Access Center, but we have grown and we've added more programs. And so we felt a new name that better described the depth and breadth of what we did would be important. So we'll. Uh, We'll go ahead and get started. Let's, why is this not advancing? Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, so who we are, we make up a variety of different um, <coughs> offices that work together to support KU students in their academic experience here on campus. We are the KU Writing Center, the Academic Learning Center, which contains supplemental instruction and tutoring services, and then Student Access Center, which is the, uh, the unit on campus that's charged by the provost to work with all KU students who have documented disabilities to ensure they have equal opportunity in the classroom. Our footprint is quite large. We work with about 30% of KU students um, throughout the various academic years, uh, uh, throughout all of our various programs that we offer. So I want to first talk a little bit about the KU Writing Center. Um, this, uh, just so you all are aware, I uh, went back to school last, uh, last June, and I'm working on my doctorate. So uh, one of the first things I did myself was when I had to get back to writing formal academic papers, uh, was talk with some of my colleagues in the Writing Center uh, and get their support. So. Primarily, writers need feedback, and so the Writing Center is a place where you as students can go and do that. We can help you at any part of the writing process, whether you're trying to figure out what topic you want to write about, or if you have a draft that you want somebody to look at and review with you. Um, I very rarely send anything to my boss that is formal without having somebody I know and trust take a look at it to just make sure I'm communicating effectively. I know what I want to say, but does the, do, will the reader know what I'm trying to, to, to convey? And so we have an incredibly extensive uh, training program for our peer writing tutors. Um, they can work with you in person, face to face. We can work with you online through e-tutoring and e-tutoring is a, kind of a cool concept. You can go and register at our website. You can upload your paper and your prompt, so whatever the writing assignment is, and then usually 24 hours later, uh, you will get feedback. You'll get written feedback using Microsoft Word track changes. Uh, and a lot of our students find that very, very helpful. Uh, and we also can do video consultations, which is uh, live, so synchronous uh, meetings. I actually uh, had one on January, uh, July 23rd because I had a major paper due on the 24th. And knowing that we were still working remotely, I had to schedule the appointment just like any old graduate student. I got no special treatment since I'm the boss, which was fine. Um, so I got to experience a video consultation and I found it incredibly, incredibly helpful. A couple of pieces to keep in mind with the Writing Center is that our overall purpose is to make you stronger writers. It's not really to edit your draft. If you're looking for a copy editor, 
that's not what we're going to do. We're going to take a very educational approach during a writing consultation that's designed to identify areas where you may need some assistance, teach you to recognize that and how to fix it. Um, so you, you can't come by and just drop off a paper and say, hey, edit it. Uh, it's really designed to be more of an engaging process. Um, we are, over the fall, we will be working uh, in person and uh, doing an awful lot of remote uh, e-tutoring and video consultations. Okay, so our second center is the Academic Learning Center, and the whole purpose for the Academic Learning Center is to, is to work with students directly in their academic coursework. So the first program I want to talk about is Supplemental Instruction. This uh, is a unique program that was designed out of the University of Missouri, Kansas City back in the early 70s. It's designed to support students that are in large lecture courses. So if at KU, if you're in a course of about 100 or more, uh, chances are we're gonna try and find a, uh, try to work with that professor to uh, provide supplemental instruction. These are also courses that have historically been challenging for KU students. So if we see that there's a high rate of students who get Bs, Fs, or have to withdraw from the class, we're gonna reach out to the professor and see, hey, can we offer SI in your class? Um, we will not hire a supplemental instruction leader unless they come recommended to us by a faculty member teaching that course. Ideally, the SI leader has actually sat in that class the previous semester, right? So they're familiar with the professor, they're familiar with the course. And then what makes this somewhat different from tutoring is that we actually uh, require the SI leader to attend the lectures. Uh, so if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 11 to 11.50, that SI leader is actually in class with you all getting that same material. And then they're offering um, open free sessions outside of class multiple times a week for students. And, and our focus in these ses sessions is not uh, necessarily, it's really, uh, it focuses on what to learn but then how to learn it. And one of our goals with this program is if we can teach you some strategies on how to better uh, learn material, you might be able to apply some of these techniques in other courses. Um, and the great thing is there is no attendance requirement. You can come by as many times as you want uh, or as few times as you want. I, I will tell you uh, with a course like Econ 144 for pre-business students, um, the typical session on Monday, Wednesday might have 10 students, but then if there's an exam on Friday, that Thursday session might have 50. So it's a, a pretty popular test prep uh, uh, support as well. Uh, and it's absolutely free to students, and we try to make uh, these sessions available all throughout the week at different times. So depending on the size of your class, if you were in a 300 person lecture, we might have three or four SI leaders in that class with you so that they can offer these support sessions all throughout the week at a variety of times. We also run a tutoring program and tutoring is, for us is, is course specific. So rather than going into a math lab where you might get a tutor who can tutor everything from uh, college algebra through uh, uh, Calc 3, our tutoring is course specific. So if you're in Chem 130, your tutor uh, is trained in the curriculum for Chem 130, and they've probably taken that course. We require recommendations uh, from multiple faculty. Um, now there is a fee for this program. So uh, right now it's $100 per course. But that, what that does is that gets you tutoring twice a week for 90 minutes each session. And for students who can't afford uh, the cost of that, of that group, uh, we can uh, provide fee waivers. The one benefit too is these groups will sometimes run for up to 15 weeks of the 16 week semester. So breaking it down by cost per week, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Um, 
our groups are generally anywhere from one to five students per group with the group average roughly about three students per session. Our tutors uh, go through an extensive training program through the College Reading and Learning Association. And most of our tutors who have been with us for at least one semester are nationally certified. It usually takes us about one full semester to get them certified. So if they, if they start and our, our certification training kicks off uh, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, um, those tutors who stay with us through spring 21, they will uh, be nationally certified by December. So the other program we offer is Student Access Center. And as I said, this is the office that primarily provides academic accommodations for KU students with documented disabilities. Um, we provide a variety of different academic accommodations, things like extended time for tests, books in audio formats or e-text or braille. Um, we can provide a reduced distraction room for your exam. If you need a reader or a scribe on your exam, we can do that. We have an in-class note-taking program. Uh, we've started uh, using, this is actually really cool. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Rocketbook technology. Rocketbook is a reusable notebook that you pair with a friction pen. And whatever the note taker takes down on paper, they can use a, an app on their phone uh, to scan that page. They can email it, upload it to any variety of cloud-based services, OneNote, Evernote, uh, things like that. And it's a real effective way that our note takers can share those notes with students. Uh, and then the student has it in an electronic format and they can then kind of organize it uh, in say Microsoft OneNote. It's actually, uh, in fact, I've started using it myself for when I go to meetings. I'll take notes and then I upload it to OneNote and then I have a consistent record of every uh, meeting I have been in. And we also do things like out of class accommodations, paratransit. So if we have students with mobility impairments and they need to get to uh, from one building to the next building, uh, we can make sure they have, uh, they have paratransit to get them there. We work extensively with uh, residence life and ha for housing accommodations and dining accommodations. Um, food allergies are a pretty serious thing for, uh, for our students these days and so we've uh, got a really effective relationship working with dining services to make sure we can accommodate a student's uh, needs uh, as far as food allergies. One cool service we do provide too is uh, what we're calling executive function coaching. Executive functions are those skills in uh, time management, organization, um, planning, things like that. One of the things that we know that students often struggle with when they come to the university is they've got all this free time and how are they gonna effectively manage their time? So our access specialists work with students to help them improve their time management skills, their goal setting, and then how to attain those goals and things like that. These coaching sessions can be weekly, bi-weekly, really it's up to the student to kind of specify what they really need. Um, and it's a highly structured setting that allows uh, the access specialist and the student to work together uh, to keep track of their progress in classes and things like that. Uh, we have specialists that are in the area of learning disabilities, ADHD, um, psychiatric disabilities, chronic medical conditions, and sensory disabilities. We provide an extensive amount of sign language interpreting and, uh, and captioning of lectures for students who need that. One of the questions I was asked to address talked a little bit about what kind of, what's the process like for this. We encourage students to apply for accommodations as early as possible. So if you all are prospective students and you're like, I'm on a 504 plan or an IEP in high school and I, may, I think I may want some accommodations if I choose KU, feel free to submit that application to us. Our staff is uh, pretty good about uh, reviewing that quickly and getting back to you. So we can oftentimes take a look at whatever documentation you have of that, uh, of that disability and let you know if it's gonna work for us or if there are things that 
uh, you may need to add to it uh, before you before you get to campus. Um, the other question uh, kind of addressed when can students request accommodation. So while I certainly encourage it, you know, kind of like voting, vote early, vote often. I, I request your accommodations early and often, um, but you can request accommodations all throughout the semester with some specific limitations. So an example would be if you came to our office three days before your final exam in bio, there may not be enough time for us to arrange an, uh, an intake appointment and to notify your faculty that you need that accommodation. So something like testing accommodations, we're gonna cut off about 10 business days before the last day of classes, just to make sure we have enough time uh, to put together a schedule to accommodate, uh, to accommodate everybody who needs a final exam accommodation. Certain things like interpreting, captioning, or, text, or, or accessible textbooks can take up to six weeks of advance notice. With textbooks, sometimes what we have to do is we have to chop off the binder of a, of a book, we have to run it through a high-speed scanner, uh, and then we have to take those electronic uh, PDF pages and convert them over to Microsoft Word, and then run a spell check and clean them up. And that sometimes can take some time. So that's why, you know, if you were coming to, uh, to us in the fall, uh, for fall 21, as soon as you make that decision and you get to your orientation uh, session, once you're done with orientation and you know what those classes are gonna be, that would be a time where you would wanna say, hey, I'm gonna need my English 101 books in electronic format. Uh, let's get started on that. But otherwise, students can certainly meet with us all throughout this semester. How to actually sign up is pretty easy. If you go to access.ku.edu, you will see a uh, button that says apply here. You just click on that. Uh, it takes you to our online system where you can register, upload your documentation, and once we have you in the system, one of our specialists is gonna reach out uh, at the schedule a time to meet with you to discuss whatever needs you may have. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's really that simple. In fact, all of our notifi faculty notifications for accommodations is done online. So last March when we had to move our services virtually, it was pretty easy for us because we were pretty well apt at uh, working with students uh, in, in the online space, so. And here's how to reach us. And if it's helpful, I can make sure that uh, the admissions folks have a copy of this if they wanna send it out. Uh, but that's who we are and that's, uh, that's what we do. We're, our whole purpose for being is to support KU students in the classroom. Uh, and we've got a pretty solid dedicated team uh, to do that. So I'm happy to, uh, to take questions. Let me. Let's see, how do I stop share? Okay. Does anybody have immediate questions right now? I know um, when you registered, um, you did submit some questions that um, you'll be speaking with some current KU students about. Um, but yeah, if you do have questions for Andrew, go ahead, throw them in the chat. Um, Throw your mic on. Maybe not. All right, so well, thank you. No, if there are no questions and you wanna email me, my email address is pretty easy. It's shu, S-H-O-E, at K-U dot E-D-U. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for giving me, me an opportunity to speak with you. Rock chalk. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Andrew Shoemaker. That was amazing. Um, hey, everybody. It's me again. It's Chancellor. Again, don't get me confused with the Chancellor of the University. I'm just a humble soul. But at the end of the day, I do want to kind of talk to you all about my personal experience um, with programs that are here to support you. Um, so I did graduate from the University of Kansas in 2019, um, right before COVID hit. So I kind of got pretty lucky. But um, at the end of the day, um, I really want to talk to you all about the hot um, a program called Hawklink. Hawklink is an amazing program to be a part of, especially for students who are um, first generation students of color or other students who um, identify in marginalized 
marginalized groups as well. But Hawklink is one of those programs where it really kind of gives you an idea of the university and provides you with the support system um, academically and just a and socially. So let me just kind of give you some of the highlights of the program itself um, and how you can really benefit from it. So um, to be in Hawklink, you have to live on campus and statistics actually show that living on campus really makes you a better student. So that's one of the requirements there for it. So I personally lived in um, the dorms. Um, I actually lived in Oliver Hall. It's no longer a dorm anymore, um, but the building still exists. Um, so that's something that you can do. But one of the perks to it is is that you can move in early so and it's no um, fee associated with that so it really kind of enables you to kind of get acquainted to campus um, a week before everybody else is here um, and that's something that we think is really great um, for that program but another thing too um, about this um, program is that you actually take a course um, and it's American studies course that pretty much is a focused on American identities um, that pretty much explores theories and methods relating to um, your identity and from various, I mean, not your identity, but different identities from um, various perspectives, um, such as race, class, gender, sexuality, age, religion. Um, and this actually feels, um, fulfills one of the KU course uh, requirements, which is really great. And if you have questions about the KU core, please ask the ambassadors too because I know that can be um, a unique one as well. But also too, there's this really cool thing um, for um, programming and experimental learning that you'll also be able to do. So for example, when I was a part of the program, we actually went to Topeka, it doesn't seem far, but it's really a great place. Um, but at the end of the day, we were able to go see the actual space where um, Brown versus Board actually um, really kind of started the school in Kansas where it started. And we got to see um, the history behind that. And we did a lot of different um, educational components to it as well. But I mean, really being able to get out in the field um, was something that was really cool. And also on top of that, um, a lot of the there's a lot of opportunities to participate in Colors of KU, which is a um, a programming retreat that is um, offered through the Office of Multicultural Affairs. If I didn't mention already, Hawklink is actually from the Office of Multicultural Affairs. OMA is a great space and you should use that as well. Um, but you also get free tutoring and um, advising, um, which is great. So these are some of the support programs that you all really have. Um, if you were to join that program, one thing I will say is for those who are prospective students, and I'm assuming that you all are, um, is that you basically will have the opportunity to apply to that. Um, come That application process will be um, opening here soon, um, but you can indicate it on your application. Um, they on their website have yet to actually put the exact date for when um, the application will open, but I know that um, it's um, going to be opening here soon. Just reach out to your admissions rep about that program and they'll be able to give you um, some more in information on that. But just a quick little update on who I am and what, like how I really got into that program. I know many, um, some of you might be KC scholars if you're actually from the area. Um, so I wasn't a KC scholar, but I was in a program very similar to it. I was a Kaufman scholar. Um, so I pretty much had a full ride to the university um, and because of that, I actually got into the Hawkling program. Um, but one of the cool things about it is, is that getting into Hawkling and being from, I mean, myself being from Kansas City, um, you really are able to kind of, Hawklink really enables you to find community here at the university. Um, and for me, one of those places where I found KU was in the Black Student Union. Um, and there were other organizations that I got involved in, but I would say um, if you really wanna get involved, there's so many different different opportunities to do that, but I would highly encourage you to get involved. Um, the Black Student Union is just one of over 600 plus places that you can do that in. Um, I also was involved in student government um, and served in various leadership positions on that. Um, and that was a really cool experience experience for me. And it was something that I was able to put on my resume and really kind of helped me get some real good skills um, to be marketable in the job market as well. So I think it kind of helped me get this job too. But at the end of the day, it was something that was really cool. I love my experience. I love being able to engage with my peers to really change the campus, but also to the uh, community of Lawrence and, you know, the greater uh, 
I mean, Kansas in general. So I really think that that's something that you all should um, really kind of engage with and think about. If you do have questions, whether that's for me, you can put them in the chat. I'll be sure to follow up with you. But if you think about something later on, um, you can actually talk to um, one of the uh, ambassadors who are going to be current students um, that you'll be talking with here pretty soon um, after this presentation. Um, and they will be able to talk about what they're involved in. But I know that you guys are probably like, I don't want to hear too much about you and everything, all that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and talk about who won our swag bag. So um, let me just get that name for you real fast because I want to say it right. Yes, if you want to do a drum roll, that will be that will be amazing. And um, let me just get it really fast. And so the winner is going to be, um, Lordy Lord. All right, it's gonna be Brianna Reynolds. So um, congratulations to you. Um, what we are pretty much gonna say is that um, at the end of the day, you get that KU lan um, lanyard um, and you get a, a t-shirt also on top of that. Oh, your name was right there the whole time. Still leaving. Okay, so also at the end of the day, you will um, you'll get that um, a Jayhawk uh, Evolution post note and some other cool Jayhawk tech cl um, cloth. Um, but essentially, just email me your. Uh, I mean, uh, no, we'll email you. So just put your email. Um, give us your email, and then we'll uh, be able to follow up with you on that. Um, and that's um, pretty much that. So. Um, Angie, if you want awesome. to. Yeah, congratulations, Brianna. Um, thank you all so much for being here today. Hopefully you um, found out a little bit more about ways that you can be successful at KU. So um, lots of great support. Um, I'm really excited. Hopefully you all can attend tomorrow as well for our final day of BJ Hawk Week, where we'll talk about um, experiential learning opportunities, internships, study abroad, all those things outside of the classroom that you can kind of really build on and um, create your own KU experience. So um, with that, I'd like to send it on over to our student ambassadors. Um, Yvonne, I'll go ahead and send it over to you, but thank you all so much and rock chalk.